This is Charlie. So let's talk for just a little tiny bit about HTTP backend. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is make a call to what we're doing right here in our program is we go out and we read in some JSON, scientist.json. We call HTTP backend to get it. And then if we have success, we iterate over this array of JSON and we pull out the first name and the last name and we stick it into an array. So we've got an empty array here and we read our JSON, which looks like this. It's first name, last name, address, city, state. And then what we do is we push the first name and the last name into, um, into our array of values here. Mm -hmm. And then when we actually run the program, What it does is it allows us to see the first and last name of the scientists who are in our JSON file. So we push the button, it gets Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, and Charles Darwin. So it actually gets the, uh, the first and last names from those guys. So what we want to do is prove to ourselves that it does it by writing a test, right? That'll actually show that so that when we type grunt test, we see that it comes back and it passes um, A test which says it should get first and last name of two scientists from JSON. Here are just the two default tests that comes with all the Yeoman Angular projects. So let's go back and see how that test works. Well, the first thing we do is in bower.json we start ang adding Angular mocks, okay? And when we put this in Angular mocks, then in our karma.conf there's a little section where where we can get where anything that's put in bower.json ends up in here. So we don't have to insert the Angular mocks line in here because its presence in bower.json grunt will push it in there for us. So now we're just down to our main spec, the spec which actually tests our main project. And what we do is we declare two new variables, HTTP and HTTP backend. And we, <clears throat> by default, we have a scope variable here. Then we declare a for each which brings us our HTTP uh, and the HTTP backend. And then there's an after each, which we do, which makes sure it's that all of our calls completed as expected. And this little bit of syntax, what I believe it's doing here is you want to declare a variable called HTTP. So what they do is they pass in this thing, <clears throat> which is a variation on the if you wrote dollar sign HTTP, then you'd be writing dollar sign HTTP equals dollar sign HTTP, which is confusing. So they let you have these little guys on the back and the end of it, which makes the assignment clear. So there's nothing different about this. It's just an alias for dollar sign HTTP. At least that's the way I understand it. Um, we inject our controller here. That's just the boilerplate code. Then down here, we take our scientist.html and we kind of squish it down into a single line and we just put it out here in one long line so it's not taking up a lot of space in our file. We could maybe stuff it even someplace else to make it more out of the way, but right now it just keeps it so it's not taking up too much space. Then this HTTP backend says that when, get, when HTTP get is called, when this call is executed, <clears throat> okay, when HTTP.get is executed, we want you to pass it this URL, and the URL I'm saying is the scope.url, which as you recall is set to scientist.json, the name of our JSON file. And then we want you to respond with this chunk of, H of JSON. So in other words, we're simulating reading scientist.json from disk by doing it here, which allows us to write a real unit test rather than an integration test where we're testing our ability to hit the server. What we're doing here is we're testing our ability to parse this JSON file. Remember, what we want to test is can we parse it correctly? Given the fact that we got the JSON file, can we correctly parse it and end up with a scope.values that has um, four items in it, a first name and last name pair for the four scientists? Okay, so that's what we're doing. Then we call get JSON, 
and that goes ahead and makes our call to get JSON, and that starts an asynchronous event. And this says, now we turn the value as if the asynchronous event returned. We're simulating the response from the server. Okay, and then we check, check to make sure that the first value in here is Isaac Newton, and the second value here is Albert Einstein. And that is, in fact, um, what we get, and that's why our tests pass. So, um, I guess if we wanted to add another one, we could add Niels Bohr, which would be test three. So we would go here and we would say the third test is, I have no idea how to spell it, which will probably be good because that'll uh, make it fail one time. And um, <clears throat> yes, so it's Niels Bohr, expected Niels Bohr, and it's N-I-E-L. So let's try E before I, or, and that passes. So now you get the general feeling for how this thing works. And hopefully I've covered all the big pieces here. The most important one, before each, this one, after each, this one, and don't forget in bower.json to add Angular mocks. All right, hope you enjoy this and have fun with it. It's good stuff. It's easy to do and it's very powerful because it helps you confirm that once you've gotten your data back from the server you're doing the right thing with it you're actually able to parse it and handle it the way you would expect okay have fun early end of the uh talk now